Hey all, hope everybody are doing good. Welcome to homeschool and we are with model question paper released by SSLC board for the year 2022 board examination. Right? See, I have already completed two videos on this. Part one video was all about physics part. Part two video is all about chemistry part. Both playlist uh, links are provided in the description. You can go and check it out if you have not yet watched. And coming to part C, that is biology part. So this biology part uh, has a total weightage of around 27 marks here. So your bio part will start from 12th main onwards, that is 24th question. Till 23rd, you had seen it in chemistry part. And now 24th question. So there are four MCQs here. Coming to 24th question. Very simple question. The plant hormone that causes wilting of leaves is option A cytokinin, option B auxin, option C abscisic acid, and option D gibberellin. Cytokinin, we know it helps in cell division. Auxin for growth, gibberellin for growth of a stem. Whereas abscisic acid inhibits the growth of plant, and it is this abscisic acid that causes wilting of leaves. Right? So, what is your option? It is option C, abscisic acid. Okay. So, I am just writing it in a shortcut way. You have to write the full answer guys. So, don't just write C, complete your answer. Option C, abscisic acid. Okay. Fine. Coming to 25th question here. The correct sequence of reproductive stages occur in flowering plant says. See, correct sequence you have to select. Look at option A, gamete, zygote, embryo, seed. Actually, it is a correct option, right? First, gametes, you know, they combine uh, uh, to undergo fertilization, right? Fusion of gametes is called fertilization. After fertilization, you know, after gametes undergo fertilization, you get zygote and this zygote uh, divides to form embryo and later it is this embryo, right, uh, uh, which is there inside the seed, right. So, here ovule, ovule gets converted into seed, ovary gets converted into fruit, isn't it, after the formation of embryo. So, you get seed. So, this is what the stages of uh, reproduction that you will observe in plants. So, you can go with option A itself, right? Coming to 26th question, very simple. The correct, uh, sorry, uh, the site of complete digestion of carbohydrate, protein and fat is options large intestine stomach liver small intestine so large intestine nothing to do with digestion right actually entire digestion is over with small intestine so undigested food uh, will come right to the large intestine stomach yes to some extent uh, digestion do occur that is protein uh, digestion you can expect in stomach Whereas liver, say liver helps for the digestion by secreting the different kind of juices, right? Bile juice, liver secretes bile juice that helps for uh, fat metabolism, fat digestion. Whereas small intestine, yes, complete digestion of carbohydrate, protein and fat you will observe in small intestine. So it is D, small intestine is your answer. Okay. Coming to 27th question here. The unfertilized egg of human female contains unfertilized egg. So they are asking the chromosome that is present in egg. So in egg, you will have X chromosome, isn't it? Because egg and sperm are the gametes. And these gametes will always have half the number of chromosome. Right? So, egg will have only the X chromosome. So, this is your answer. So, you can go for option B. Clear? Fine. This is all about MCQs that you have in bio part. 
and now coming to 13th main where you have one mark questions here so even four one mark questions are there so let's look at 28th question from the chapter control and coordination the folding up of leaves of a sensitive plant that is touch me not plant on touching with finger is not a tropism by what do you mean by tropic movement it is a directional movement or growth independent movement isn't it say in touch me not plant uh, the movement is non directional movement isn't it so which we will call it as nastic movement so the movement that you observe in touch me plant touch me not plant is nastic movement okay which is non directional this is non directional right by changing uh, by change in the water content of leaves uh, the leaves gets folded off isn't it so that non directional movement is called you know nastic movement it is because of uh, this reason when you touch with the finger they get folded off it is not called as tropism it's not related to any tropic movement okay so it's because it is non directional that's why you don't call it as tropic movement clear now 29th question the most expected one analogous organs and homologous organs see both are very very important so here they are asking you what are analogous organs so analogous organs are the organs which have different structure and same function right so they have different different structure and same function example wings of bat and wings of butter butterfly structure wise they are different but function is same that is they use their wings for flying isn't it so they are called as analogous organs coming to question number 30 what is the role of decomposer in the ecosystem so here decomposers work is to decompose right so decomposers will break complex complex substances into simple substances into simple substances right so they help in decomposition of animal and plant waste so that way they indirectly helping to clean the environment right so what is their job it is to clean the environment right so how do they clean the environment by uh, breaking complex substances into simple substances so that this is what you have to write as the answer coming to the next question question number 31 why are traits acquired during its lifetime of an individual is not inherited right see what do you mean by acquired traits here let me talk about 31st question here acquired traits are traits acquired during lifetime during lifetime is called acquired traits okay so they are not passed through genes they are not passed through genes so that is why uh, we don't call them as inherited traits okay so this is what the reason you have to give for that question so that is all about one mark questions and now let us go for two mark questions here okay so 14th main there are two two mark questions sorry three two mark questions are there let's discuss one by one see if you talk about 32nd question it is a diagram of nephron they asked you so draw the diagram showing the structure of nephron and label brow uh, bowman's capsule so definitely nephron diagram you have to practice one of the very very important diagrams okay so let me not discuss the diagram here because you can refer the diagram for textbook coming to 33rd question very simple write any two differences between biodegradable and non biodegradable substances 
Guys, whenever they ask you differences, always show it in this pattern. One side you write biodegradable, biodegradable substances. Other side you write down non-biodegradable substances. Okay, so point wise you have to mention. So first point is what? Uh, they are decomposed. Okay, so they undergo decomposition, right? they undergo undergo decomposition in soil decomposition in soil whereas non biodegradable substances do not undergo do not undergo decomposition in soil right so this is your first point coming to second point much simple point is there they uh, do not cause pollution do not cause pollution right whereas non biodegradable cause pollution they cause pollution right so since they asked you two points you can write these two points as it is fine and there is a or question here write a grassland food chain and name the different tropic levels in it okay so how do how do you uh, show the grassland food chain see first you will have a grass grass is eaten up by grasshopper grasshopper right so grasshopper is eaten up by frog frog is eaten up by snake snake is eaten up by eagle right so this is your grassland food chain so here grass is called as producer right this is a producer whereas grass hopper, hopper is a primary consumer this is called as primary consumer so primary consumers always eat producers whereas grasshopper is eaten up by the frog so frog is called as secondary consumer secondary consumer whereas snake eats frog so snake is called tertiary consumer tertiary consumer so as it is you have to write guys mention the food chain and then mention which is producer which is primary consumer secondary and tertiary consumer okay so this carries two mark fine and coming to 34th question that they are asking you the flow of energy in an ecosystem is unidirectional how justify okay see uh, the energy flow always uh, goes in one direction right so you have to justify this statement i mean you have to explain this in a elaborate way so how do you explain usually plants get energy so they get energy or uh, plants absorb energy we can write plants absorb energy during photosynthesis right during photosynthesis see i'm i'm writing all points uh, in a very detailed way point wise okay so this is the first point that you can write coming to second point what you can write is this energy this energy is passed to two passed to two next levels next tropic levels next tropic levels of food chain progressively yes or no progressively progressively and energy is no longer available for the previous level energy is no longer no longer available for previous level okay so that is why that is why that is why 
what we say energy flow in ecosystem is unidirectional that is why energy flow is unidirectional okay so this is what the answer you can mention guys okay that is all about uh, two mark questions now let us go for three mark questions see guys this 35th question is very very important because uh, you know this question can be asked directly this way or they may ask you to write the products okay write the flow chart to show the breakdown of glucose by various pathways in the cytoplasm of living organism see the different pathways i have shown it on a board glucose initially in cytoplasm it will get converted into pyruvate glucose is a six carbon compound and this fellow is getting converted into three carbon compound so this pyruvate later goes to um, mitochondria isn't it so it will go to mitochondria i mean uh, let me do it here first i am explaining this pathway so mitochondria this is uh, the aerobic respiration we say this is happening in a humans right so once it goes to mitochondria in presence of oxygen pyruvate gets converted into carbon dioxide water and you get energy right but in a human muscle cell but in a human muscle cell uh, lack of oxygen uh, in the absence of oxygen this pyruvate gets converted into lactic acid and energy whereas in case of yeast in case of yeast anaerobic respiration takes place that means in the absence of oxygen this pyruvate gets converted into ethanol carbon dioxide and energy so this is common in all the things okay but from here it differs in case of yeast what pyruvate gets converted into in case of muscle cell that is in the absence of oxygen what pyruvate is getting converted into and in presence of oxygen that is in mitochondria what pyruvate is getting converted into so these products are very important it can be asked individually as one mark question or mcq or it can be asked uh, as a three mark question something like this okay so you just have to mention this pathway neatly that is all about uh, 35th question but for the 35th question you have uh, or question also it is much simple explain the function of stomach in the human digestive system right so point wise you can write the answer guys so first you tell what is stomach it is a muscular organ right muscular organ expands so this organ expands when food enters into it food enters right and later this stomach secretes stomach secretes three things right so first one is it secretes pepsin pepsin so what is pepsin you know pepsin is secreted in digestive glands so you will have digestive glands inside the stomach so they will secrete the enzyme pepsin so pepsin is digestive enzyme it is called as digestive enzyme that uh, breaks that breaks proteins proteins into amino acids right so this helps in uh, digestion of protein which one this enzyme helps in the digestion of protein right and in a stomach you will also have hcl so why hcl is secreted so hcl provides provides acidic environment acidic environment for pepsin okay so pepsin will work only in presence of acid that is why hcl is also secreted and you also have another important thing secreted in stomach that is mucus so what is the role of mucus mucus protects stomach wall stomach wall okay uh, from from hcl 
say hcl is a acid it may spoil the cells or the lining of the stomach which is very much delicate so that is the reason mucus is secreted and that will uh, protect the stomach lining from hcl right so this is how you can write your answer in point wise so what actually happens in stomach these are the three things gets uh, uh, secreted so what each and everything will do in a stomach so that's what you must be able to explain clear fine and coming to 36th question this is much simple one from the chapter how do organisms reproduce they are asking you explain human male reproductive system so human male reproductive system contains the different parts first important part is testis second one is vas deferens vas deferens right and you also have associate glands associate glands like prostate gland prostate and seminal vesicles right seminal vesicles and uh, we have penis right so here you have to tell uh, the function of each and every part so what happens in testis uh, you know testis uh, secretes you know sperms isn't it production of sperms takes place in testis and also uh, certain male hormones like testosterone these hormones always helped uh, help for the formation of sperms right and that is what you have to write later vas deferens it it carries sperms isn't it and then associate glands secrete a liquid that provides nutrition for the sperm as well as they help for the easy transfer of sperm and then penis uh, uh, sperms will come out through penis right so this is how neatly point wise you can explain see i didn't write the points but you have to write what happens in testes uh, what is the use of vas deferens what does the associate glands do everything you have to write point wise so that is all about 36th question and now let's go to 37th question from the chapter heredity and evolution so coming to 37th question question the tall pea plant bearing red uh, flowers tall with red flowers they have given genotype capital t capital t capital r capital r is crossed with dwarf pea plant bearing white flowers so the genotype small t small t smaller smaller represent the result obtained in f2 generation of dihybrid cross with the help of checkerboard mention the ratio of different plants obtained in f2 generation okay so dihybrid cross they are asking so you just have to work it out so in the f1 generation what do you get you get capital t small t capital r smaller that is all all tall red plants tall red plants you will get in f1 generation right so this is f1 generation f1 generation so now if i take uh, plants having these genotype capital t small t capital r smaller crossed with capital t small t capital r smaller then uh, now i'm trying to do f2 generation okay so what are the gametes that you get you get capital t capital r capital t small r right small t capital r small t small r same gametes you will get here also capital t capital r capital t small r small t capital r t r isn't it fine and now uh, these are the gametes that you are getting and later you have to show the checkerboard so how do you show the checkerboard write the gametes of one parent uh, you know horizontally that is capital t capital r right so capital t small r then small t capital r then small t small r and the same gametes you will write vertically capital t capital r and capital t small r small t capital r 
then small t small r then you will just combine right so capital t capital d capital r capital r this is tall red variety and capital t capital d capital r small r this is also tall red variety then capital t small t capital r capital r this is also tall red variety like that you should go on filling capital t small t this is also tall <coughs> red variety then capital t capital t this is also tall red variety then this fellow will be tall white variety right tall white variety then capital t small t capital r small r so this is also tall red variety then capital t small t small r small r this joined with this so you get tall white variety okay so like that you should fill this also this combined with this capital t small t capital r capital r tall red variety this combined with this capital t small t capital r small r so this is also tall red variety then this combined with this so this is also tall red variety then you have this with this so this is dwarf red variety dwarf red different variety right and then small t small t capital r this is also dwarf red variety then fill it up okay so you should neatly do it in your examination this is tall white variety then small t small t r r this is also dwarf dwarf red variety then small t small t smaller dwarf white variety dwarf white so you should neatly mention guys varieties so how many you have got tall red tall red varieties are nine and uh, dwarf red varieties how many that is three then tall white varieties how many that is three and dwarf dwarf white varieties how many that is one so what is the phenotypic ratio here 9 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1 so this completes your answer so first you have to show what you will get in f1 generation then after uh, breeding you know mention the gametes later checkerboard mention the varieties give the phenotypic ratio so this completes your answer for which you will be getting how many marks three marks okay fine and there is or question here always uh, there will be or question in heredity and evolution uh, either question uh, see the first part of a question will come from heredity or they will ask a question from evolution part okay so from evolution part they asked actually this is very very simple what is speciation mention the factors that could lead to the rise of new species so what is speciation here a uh, process of forming new species process of forming new species is called speciation isn't it and what are the factors that could lead to speciation first one mutation right and second one uh, natural selection natural selection third one genetic drift very important even the definition of genetic drift is important guys and fourth one geographical isolation right geographical isolation so these are the points that you can write not just mentioning the names you have to explain at least one sentence you have to explain neatly right so that is all about uh, 37th question guys coming to the last main that is 16th main uh, 38th question so this is completely a four mark question uh, which is on diagram from control coordination so the most expected question that is human brain 
They asked you, draw the diagram showing structure of human brain, label the following parts, cerebrum and cerebellum. Clear? So human brain diagram is very, very important. Not only that, different parts and its functions also can be asked sometimes. So you have to be very careful with the diagrams. So this completes the entire model question paper that was released by uh, Karnataka board for the year 2022 examination. So hope you are clear with all answers and how to write the answers, right? Fine. So complete content is there in our uh, channel. Take the best use of every content and score the same percent marks. Clear? And I will also come up with the revision videos on uh, some chapters. Some chapters are already covered. Few more chapters are yet to cover. Definitely I will come with the revision uh, videos and with lots of application questions. So that it can help you to score a very good mark in your examination. Okay. So don't waste your time. All the best. Keep learning and uh, good luck for your examinations. Thank you so much.